Tips from Trestle is brought to you by The Belcher Companies Navigator Group Purchasing E-Menu Choice Point of Sale and Clark Food Service and Equipment. Welcome to Tips from Trestle, the Senior Living Food and Hospitality Podcast. This podcast explores the senior living industry with a unique focus on food, hospitality, and the community experience. I'm your host, Aaron Fish. During three decades in the hospitality industry, I focused my work on creating exceptional experiences for the customers we serve. My goal for this podcast? Educate, inform, and inspire leaders in senior living. How? By creating hospitality with a purpose, by bringing the customer experience to the front of mind in our industry. We should bring the passionate spirit of food and hospitality to everything that we do and everyone we serve each and every day. So what are we waiting for? Let's get to it. Today on Tips from Trestle, I'm going to welcome you to our end of year episode. On this podcast, we're going to reflect on the past year, revisit some of our most impactful episodes, and discuss the trends and challenges that have shaped our industry, and I will do my best to put a bow on 2023. As I look back on all the great interviews and conversations we've had here on Tips from Trestle this year, there's so many of them, it made it really hard to find ones to highlight in this season wrap-up. Hopefully the ones that we found, that hope, hopefully we found ones that either you missed or that really grabbed your attention and helped make a difference in how you approach your day-to-day in the senior living industry. I hope you enjoy our look back on these great episodes. So the first episode I want to highlight is episode 232, Mining the Love Stories. It was a great conversation I had with Bridge the Gap Senior Living Podcast host, Josh Crisp. In addition to being host of the leading podcasts for senior living, he is also the founder of Salinity. And they've done a lot of great work around how they build communities and how they really focus on getting to the heart of what's really important in our space. And so, as you can see in this clip, there's a lot of passion around what we do and why it's so important, especially from this perspective, for us to mine those love stories and really get to the root of what's so important about what we do. And so that's been, I guess, the the biggest thing that I've learned in our focus is on the development is just really understanding what it, what product and service we need to deliver for that local market. Yeah, I think you make a really great point, you know, especially because, yes, there are some really big players in our industry, but the vast majority of communities are being operated by these small and medium-sized regional operators, and they don't have the bandwidth, they don't have the resources for that. And so finding those regional partners or those specialty partners makes so much sense to make sure you you hit all the right notes to develop the program. And so to kind of put on your, your marketing hat here for a minute, when you've got a really well executed food and hospitality program, uh, how does that impact the, the, the role in attracting potential residents and really differentiating a community in that marketplace? Well, it's a huge opportunity. That's what I would say. You know, when when I think about marketing at the community level, you know, there are so many potential success stories that you can share. You know, we don't overcomplicate marketing. Now, marketing is complex in and of itself nowadays with technology and all the different things that are being used and implemented. But once you have those tools in place or a partner agency to do that, the real key is in the content, right? And yeah. one of the challenges of our industry is we have traditionally not taken the time to invest in what I call mining for the love stories, whether that's on the team member side, whether that's on the resident, the family or the partner provider. And so that's number one is I guarantee you with a quality food program, 
you are going to differentiate yourself from many providers because as we've all heard that are in the business, what's the number one complaint in senior living communities? It's the food program and it doesn't yeah. have to be. And honestly, we just haven't done a real good job of, of finding and telling the success stories. And so you think about it, if that's one of the most important things to us as humans each day is what we're right. consuming. And second, we know that it's potentially one of the most important things to the resident in their community when, when they're seeking out communities, then why shouldn't we be very intentional in working to produce the success stories that I call love stories and then sharing those in your market? So I think you have the opportunity with your imaging, your visuals and your storytelling to differentiate yourself in the market by what you're doing in your food division. I love the way you frame it around the, creating the love stories because I think about food. I mean, I've been doing it for forever, but it's really, it's a passion. So this second clip was a, another great conversation with an industry leader and a good friend of mine, Kate Riza. Kate had recently transitioned into her new role as Divisional Director of Human Resources with Lake House Senior Living. And I wanted to talk to her and, and really gain more insight around the human resources aspect. In episode number 230, her and I talk about hiring for heart and why that's so important, especially when you think about the current staffing landscape and why it's so important that we look for and find those right people for our industry. To get younger generation interested in senior living. Yeah. And we have such a huge demand for younger workers to come into our industry that we're really, really starting to, and continue, I shouldn't say starting, we're continuing to struggle with non-senior living industry employers, the Amazons, like the Walmarts, who are keeping up with what a lot of job seekers want nowadays. So yeah. we don't, we shouldn't be left in the dust anymore. We need to, this is, should be our wake up call. Yeah. And I, it leads me to want to ask you a question. One of the things that, I, you know, when we hear people talk about the different generations in the workforce and the things that they value and what they look for in an employer, the, the younger generations that you were talking about, one of the things that they seem to be really dialed into and focused into, in addition to, you know, do I make ends meet, is what's the purpose of the organization that I'm working? For. Yes. What's the mission? How can I make impact by working in this job? You know, it, it's an interesting dichotomy. You talk about like older workers are like they're dedicated because it's they do the they do their time with the company and it was about how can I mutually benefit the growth of a company. Now it's shifted to I want to work with the organizations that have the right purpose, that have the right mission, that fit what I value. And so how does that impact how you interview, how you recruit, how does that, that, that kind of shift the thinking that managers and leaders need to look at? Yeah. At, at Lake House Senior Living, we hire for heart. We can teach you a lot of the procedures, policies, processes that, that we do, right? We can teach you some of that, but we can't teach you how to care about a resident, truly care about their well-being. And we want people who believe in what we're doing and what we're here to, who we're here to serve and not just show up for a paycheck. And so we've actually designed our recruiting process around each individual role and utilizing personality assessments to determine who is the right fit in our organization. We have this picture of an ideal, let's say, executive director. And our talent acquisition team has developed a set of questions that helps grow and, 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 and build on a person's heart and passion for senior living and understand if they are a true fit with what our mission is to serve those seniors. In addition to that, we also use, so not just interview questions, but we also really, really lean heavily on personality assessments. And we utilize those for every single leader position that we are uh, recruiting for in our community. And if a person doesn't fall within our targets, Oftentimes, you find that those are the folks that really struggle to succeed in our industry. They either don't have the passion, don't have the capacity to understand our operations. But those that fit within our target, have, we found them to be very successful. So that's what we're hiring for is heart. We can teach you how to do tests. 
but we need someone who's coming in and is really here and focused for the residents because that's really what our mission is as a company. Absolutely. Well, Kate, thanks again for letting us talk through this struggle of staffing and, and finding the right people and how to do that. It's been a great conversation. So thanks for being yeah. here on Tips with Trestle. Yeah. And Aaron, I want to give you a shout out because the hospitality programs that you have been talking about and implementing with different operators have been so essential to building culture. So major kudos to you and what you're doing. Your mission is so important to our industry. So keep doing what you're doing, my friend. I appreciate it. Thanks, Kate. All right. Today, I want to tell you about one of Trestle's senior living partners, Belter. Belter is a food service design, equipment, and supply company that has been providing expert guidance to the food and beverage industry for nearly a century. A strategic partner to the most successful food service operations in the country, Belter provides support in kitchen and bar design, equipment procurement and install, and supplies. Their team of senior living food service experts have experience across the continuum of care. From independent living to skilled nursing and CCRCs, Belter specializes in right-sizing new facilities, modernizing remodels, and providing the right food service equipment and supplies. At Belter, they are committed to creating memorable experiences for their customers and their guests. With their top-notch team and a global network of quality supplier partners, their customer-focused approach is built on a foundation of collaboration and decades of industry experience. So thank you for considering Belter for all of your food service needs. As you all know, 2023 has been a year of both challenges and opportunities in the senior living industry. We've seen economic turmoil, tight labor markets, and high inflation, all of which have made it difficult for providers to evolve their services. Despite these challenges, We've also seen innovative thinking and a reimagining of how senior living communities operate. Because of all of this, I want to bring you our Tips from Trestle Top 10 for 2023. So let's dive into the key trends and developments that have shaped our industry this year. Economic turmoil and uncertainty. In 2023, the senior living industry grappled with economic turmoil, including tight labor markets, rising interest rates, and historically high inflation. These factors made it challenging for providers to evolve their services to meet the needs of the next generation of consumers. Getting new development projects financed became increasingly difficult, and investing in operational innovation was tough amidst these economic conditions. Providers had to find ways to redefine the active adult product and reimagine the value proposition to the consumers. Struggle for evolution. Senior living providers were focused on catering to the next generation of consumers, but faced difficulties in evolving their product due to economic pressures. They had to reimagine how senior living communities operate and present their value to consumers. One example of this struggle is the stagnant penetration rates, which hovered around 10%, indicating that the industry had not consistently met consumer expectations. This situation posed a risk of further decline if the offerings did not align with the preferences of the baby boomer generation. The rise of rental active adult communities. The rise of active adult communities marked a significant trend in the senior living industry, shaping the future of low acuity senior living. These communities became increasingly popular, leading the industry to focus on core strengths and reevaluate its approach. The National Investment Center for Senior Housing and Care, NIC, clearly defined the sector this year for data tracking purposes and issued an initial report shedding light on key metrics such as margin and length of stay. This had a huge impact on how operators looked at active adult. And this surge of active adult projects emerging nationwide is reflected in the growth and demand of this type of housing. One example of this was a project from a major player, Graystar, who pivoted towards their middle market active adult brand album after many years of going big on more upscale offerings. New care paradigms rooted in population health. A paradigm shift towards reimbursing the root causes of diseases began to change the healthcare landscape, which was impacting senior living as well. 
This shift towards value-based care represented a move away from a purely biomedical model towards a focus on population health and the social determinants of health. The COVID-19 pandemic illustrated the need for this paradigm shift, emphasizing the importance of addressing group-level processes and shared environments in healthcare. Challenges in staffing and occupancy. We knew we were going to get here. We've all been talking about it. Staffing shortages and occupancy issues were among the top challenges for senior living this year. For example, a survey from the National Investment Center for Seniors Housing and Care revealed that 82% of respondents were still experiencing staffing shortages, although conditions have been improving some this year. It was also noted that nearly 70% of operators reported significant or severe workforce shortages in 2023. Staffing has eased some in the waning months of the year, but it will continue to be a challenge that the industry will have to face. We're going to be looking at needing to fill over 9 million new positions by 2030. It's an unprecedented number, and it's going to continue to impact this in years to come. Technological expansion. Technology continue to play a significant role in the senior living industry, with trends in technology expanding into the senior market. Companies position themselves to exploit the increased demand for senior living services and products. For instance, artificial intelligence became more prevalent, with organizations leveraging pow its power to create more intelligent products and services. In the food and hospitality side of the industry, the growth of robotics and self-service kiosks to provide increased options in combat staffing issues was also a big issue and on the rise this year. Marketing and sales solutions. The emergence of new and effective marketing and sales solutions was a notable development in the senior living industry. These solutions focused on generating high quality leads to address the challenges posed by the growing 75 plus population. For example, senior housing investors expected rent growth to continue through 2023, indicating a need for effective marketing strategies to capitalize on this anticipated increase. One area that has also seen an increased focus is owning and capitalizing on your digital footprint and steering away from lead aggregators. I interviewed Julie Potowitz of Grow Your Occupancy for one of our early season three episodes on this very topic. You definitely don't want to miss that episode. Merger and acquisition activity. The industry experienced significant M&A activity driven by themes such as the need to address future affordability challenges, and the middle income market. For example, 2023 included notable consolidation as providers added large portfolios or sizable operators merged, highlighting the importance of achieving greater scale without compromising culture or quality. One such merger was between Agewell Silvera Living and Sonata Senior Living. Agewell Silvera assumed management of the Sonata Senior Living branded communities as of November 1st, and is integrating both organizations' leadership teams to create a unified and dynamic force in senior living. Financial Troubles and Expansion Financial troubles and expansion were both present in the senior living industry. The active adult market obviously continued to grow, as we've mentioned before, while the bankruptcy filing of a large CCRC community was a notable event. The lending market tightened for senior living providers and occupancy issues for underperforming operators negatively impacted facilities' bottom lines. For those facilities that weren't able to sustain their bottom lines and are failing financial covenants, lenders have become less lenient on waivers, and in some cases, lenders are imposing default lending rates. Market growth and demographics. The senior living market was projected to achieve significant growth, focusing on the 75 plus population that we're all familiar with and the expansion of that market until 2031. An example of this growth has been the rise of active adult communities, as we've mentioned before, which has really thrived due to the demographic shifts that entailed more housing tailored for retiring or soon to be retirees. Unlike previous generations, this group, which is projected to live longer and healthier lives, seeks homes that match their active and busy lifestyles. To satisfy this demand, active adult communities are springing up nationwide, especially in the Sun Belt, where many have relocated for a milder climate and an active lifestyle. 
The desire of baby boomers and investors for this type of housing has led an industry publication to proclaim active adult communities as the hottest growth sector in senior living this year. So there it is. It's our 2023 tips from Trestle top 10 key trends and developments that shaped senior living industry this year. The Navigator is the largest full service GPO that exclusively focuses on the senior living community. And what that means is we provide products and services that help our members provide a great environment for their residents, such as like MRO, hospitality equipment, food, business products, as well as technology solutions. We actually surround our members with a level of support unmatched in the industry. Another great episode was episode 218, F&B Futurism, channeling Ray Kurzweil. I always love talking with Katie Griffith about the future and technology. It's something that's been on everybody's mind in 2023. But we had such an amazing conversation where we basically said, hey, we're going to take off all the training wheels and we're going to look straight ahead into the future. And we got into an amazing conversation around AI and autonomous vehicles and what that really looks like when you actually reverse the idea of not just getting out in the community with our residents and, and our population, but maybe actually bringing community into what we do and where we're at. It was an amazing conversation. Take a listen. Katie, thanks for joining me today on Tips from Trestle. You're here because we're going to talk about technology and how the technology that is coming, some like newer technologies are going to impact how we do business in senior living. So as you think about that, what are a couple of technologies that are maybe in their infancy now that could have a really big impact on how we do things in senior living? Yeah, Aaron, I'm so excited for this conversation because I feel like we spend so much time talking about the current ideas with the current technologies that we have today, right? And I'm excited to just Star Trek ourselves. <laughs> so the things I've been thinking about lately are autonomous vehicles. So okay. before we know it, you know, seniors are going to be able to hop in an autonomous vehicle and go and get to where they want to go. So whether that's, you know, transportation at your community, you know, taking them to Walmart or their doctor's appointment, or let's talk about bringing the aging population to our community, right? How, what better way to really fill our wait list and start offering our programs and our, our facilities and our venues to the general public and especially the the seniors and their families. Yeah, no, I it's an intriguing idea because one of the things we were talking about it, I think it was the Environments for Aging conference in April. The conversation was around building these spaces and we've got all these communities with all of these great activity rooms and dining rooms and little little corner neck, you know, notches or whatever for this activity or for that thing, but they sit empty most of the time, right? And so when you walk through a community, it could be, you know, two in the afternoon, but it doesn't feel like there's a lot going on. It doesn't feel like a vibrant community because you've got dead space, right? And so, you know, their conversation was how do we redesign communities of the future, build them so that we can multitask in spaces. But we've got all of this community space now currently that we've got to figure out how to how do we utilize it either to better market ourselves or how do we capitalize on it from a revenue perspective and i this idea of autonomous vehicles bringing people in is definitely something that i think could have some merit going forward and start inviting the public to come out and experience these wonderful programs and dining dining venues that are just absolutely gorgeous and the the food and the service and the you know almost the performances that you all put on in the culinary space yeah. is just incredible and becoming just a part of the the community is just going to maintain that pipeline of people knowing 
who you are and wanting to move in when they get the opportunity. Yeah. The the idea of using a technology like autonomous vehicles to create your to set your community up to be almost like a destination for someone who uh, and that snowbird example is perfect, right? You've got somebody who is age appropriate, who's taking advantage of the food, the outlets, the activities, the programming. But it, it could be a very synergistic approach to how you work with the outside community. It is one of the things that, that I don't know that we talk about a lot is it, it a lot of times feels like there's this wall between a senior living community in the community outside, right? Like we bring people in to do activity. We'll bring performers in, things of that nature. But there just always kind of seems to be this this barrier. And I think the yeah. more you open that up, the better it'll be. I mean, it's great to look at that that technology and how it can build this bigger community. But you're going to have to have things to support it. What are What are some of the things that operators are going to need to get really good at technology-wise to support something this innovative? So the point of sale technology, the great news is that there are some options out there today that not only support our residents' meal plans and accounts, but at the same time, they some of them also have a fully built out loyalty program for like the general public, like we're used to seeing. So you want to make sure your point of sale can handle the pu- general public versus Residents, of course, you've got tipping involved as well. But, and I do want to say too, like as people are listening, you know, they probably have all these other alarms going off too, like security and how are we going to have all these people from the public coming in, you know? And I get it. Like there are things that we have to plan for and figure yeah. out, but let's do it. I mean, let's plan it and figure it out. I mean, obviously, independent living is much more reasonable for this type of thing yeah. building so many more apartments to accommodate the baby boomers that are coming right so hopefully we're gonna get some people thinking and maybe we can start some conversations around this and really kind of push us to looking way more into the future than uh, i think we are now which would be really great for the industry as a whole This last episode we want to feature from season two is episode 209, The Joy in Building a Culture of Learning. I've been working with James Lee and Bella Groves almost from the start of Trestle Hospitality Concepts. He has such a great way of looking at the industry and is really focused on how do we make it better, not just for our residents, but for those that are working in it. And how do we get them to buy in and understand what's valuable about it? And so we dive into why. His onboarding and training program isn't just a few days, but it's over a course of 13 weeks and really is about bringing value and building a culture of learning and getting the right people to buy in and do things the Bella Groves way. It was a great episode and a great listen. So check it out. James, thanks for joining me today on Tips from Trestle. I'm happy to be here, Aaron. I'm excited to be talking to you because we've, Obviously, you know, we've been working together with Bella Groves yep. and what you're building there is really unique. So Bella Groves, in, in my view, is the kind of response or solution to the problem I see in our industry that dementia care is treated like assisted living plus. It's just, you know, it, it follows a very similar model of senior living. And, and I believe that we need to make a very sharp right turn in the way that we address and support caregivers uh, of anyone supporting someone with dementia. And that means either a professional caregiver or the family caregiver. And in short, senior living at the moment addresses the last 10 to 15% of someone's journey in dementia, whereas Bella Groves is trying to help support the entire journey of dementia from the onset of symptoms all the way through end of life, whether they're in a facility or at home. You know, you're really approaching it. I'm not going to say upside down because that makes it sound like it's, it's <laughs> not right. Yeah. But it, you're really kind of taking the idea of employee empowerment and ownership and building that culture. And you're doing it in a very different way than I've seen other operators do. Thanks, Aaron. I, I talk about our industry and the way we do things from a place of love and concern. 
it sometimes feels like criticism, right. but I don't think we can actually improve and change unless we name and call out the things that we haven't been good at. So here's one of them. Um, in our industry, we say things about our caregivers and our frontline um, that we don't back up in our actions. And so I mean things like we say that caregivers are our heroes. We we laud the frontline workers and we give, you know, kudos and kudos to to them in internal, you know, company communication on social media. But the truth is caregivers feel burnt out. They feel like they don't have resources. They feel underpaid. They feel understaffed. Uh, you talk to caregivers at any community across the senior living industry, and you're going to find a population of people at every facility that feel like that. This message will resonate with them. Culture tends to be something that people think that it has to be built at the top and outlined and, and defined, and then you push it down and you push it down. And I don't think that that's the way it, it, it works. It's not just culture on paper, right? I've seen that done in organizations yeah. where they spend thousands of dollars doing that, but they don't get buy-in. They don't get the feedback. So mm -hmm. I'm curious as to how you approach working in a structured, regulated environment, such as memory care, um, and how you kind of balance that with this, let's give employees a little bit more freedom to do what they need to do to be successful. Man, that is a really amazing question, Aaron, because the, the premise of that question supports this idea that we have that the caregiver is the natural human resource and the organization has to you know, bring, bring their skills to the table to, to make that resource more productive. So yeah, we're, we're, we're regulate, we're a regulated industry, typically by state, there are rules, regulations, protocols, policies, et cetera, et cetera. But our job as leaders of organizations like this is to understand the rules well enough that we can make them disappear in front of the caregivers. They shouldn't have to worry about you know, what's the protocol for this? What's the licensing regulatory line item that, that relates to that? So here's an example. At our Bella Groves location, one of the things that's very important to us is that the residents who live in our care facility have access to every part of that home, including the kitchen. We, as the leaders of organizations, need to understand what do caregivers want? They want to be successful in, in creating joyous days. Great. We have to do the research. Uh, we have to uh, create the structures. We have to understand the rules well enough that we can create the, the conditions of play that caregivers don't have to think about that. To your word, we unburden them with all of those things floating around and make the care simple. So I'll, I'll, I'll give you a, a clear example of this. All of our caregivers go through a 13-week progressive dementia skills training and skills checkoff. We have had so many caregivers now graduate from those 13 weeks. And at the end of those 13 weeks, we do a capstone project. They have to present to us their understanding of our dementia methodology, their application of uh, lessons that spoke to them, and they have to center it around a specific resident. So what it does is it personalizes all of those kind of teachings in real world application. Now, here's, here's the amazing part. Caregivers who at the beginning of their employment with us were kind of overwhelmed with this idea that 13 weeks of training, oh my God, I'm, you know, how am I going to navigate all of that? Yeah. By the end of it, every single one of these capstone projects are just, they're amazing. They're, they're really like collegiate level, in some cases, presentations and Talk about empowerment. Empowerment is not saying, hey, Aaron Fish, you know, you're, you're new to Bella Groves and this is an expectation of you and let's go deliver great care. Hoorah. It's more about, I understand what motivates you. I'm going to give you the tools and the resources to accomplish what is in your heart. And that's what they talk about in these capstone projects is like, I feel so much more capable to, to do what I've always wanted to do, but people haven't given me this resource and understanding of dementia before. And as a result of that, here's a story of, you know, this resident and how I was able to help her in a way that I don't think I could have done before. That's empowerment. So that, that takeaway as a summary is 
empowerment has to be a reflection of the employee's motivations, not the employer's motivations. It was really hard to find the right episodes and the right clips. Just there were so many great conversations and I really wish I could have highlighted all of them. So I, I really encourage you before season three starts here in a few weeks, go back and take a listen to some of these great conversations. There's just so many great hours of content here. I'm really proud of the work uh, that we did in putting this podcast together in 2023. So as we wrap up this year, I just want to say thank you to all of the listeners for your support, for your engagement, for going on and subscribing to our YouTube channel, our Spotify channel, finding us on Amazon, iTunes, and really helping us grow this community around the senior living community experience and food and hospitality. Your feedback and participation have made this podcast a valuable resource for those in the senior living industry. I look forward to bringing you more great conversations like this in the coming years. Remember, the challenges we face are opportunities for growth and innovation. So let's continue to work together to improve the food, hospitality, and customer experience in senior living. And thank you for listening to Tips from Trestle. And here's to a successful 2024. Cheers. So there you have it, another one in the books. Thanks again, everybody, for listening. Please follow, like, and subscribe on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts. And follow us on Twitter at Tips from Trestle. You can also learn more about the work I do by following me on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and even TikTok. And be sure to check out Trestle Hospitality Concepts at www.trestlehospitalityconcepts.com. I'm your host, Aaron Fish, and this has been another episode of Tips from Trestle.